So here we're looking at uh, Weka Explorer, which is a, a slightly different GUI interface. It's open source and it's free. It's part of the reason that I like to use this tool. You don't need an, a connection to analysis of services, but it has um, two different ways. In fact, if I look at the GUI chooser, you've got Explorer and Knowledge Flow. Um, I'll be showing you how to use these two. So in Explorer, what I like is the data visualization. Uh, the very last column is our PEP column. This is whether they participate in the campaign or not. Here's our, uh, our yeses in blue and our, our noes in red. Um, and then when we look at each column, we can see the distribution. But within the distribution, it shows us the yes and noes, which is a nice way to look at that data. Um, in, that, in, in a sense, even just looking at the status can give us for a, a feel. So for example, we know that no, I forgot, but I think the blue is is no, is the um, yeses, right? So if we look at the children, it looks like the ones in the, in the second bin, ones with one child, seem to have participated more strongly in that campaign. So it gives us a feel for what attributes may be important. Um, we can also do filters. So uh, let's say we want age is not binned right now. You notice we get a mean and a maximum and a minimum and a standard deviation. That's because it's still a continuous variable. We can choose to create bins by coming over here under choose, under unsupervised attribute, and discretize. When we select that in, in Weka, we get a, a box. We can say more to see what each one of these fields me means, but we can uh, tell it how many bins we want. Um, we also have the ability to tell it to think about the target variable when it creates a bin. So let's try that, and we'll tell it that we want five bins. And then we'd have to click Apply here for it to work. So it actually only created one bin, which I don't like. So I'm going to undo, if I don't like what, it ha what happened. And I get my age bin again, and I'm going to get rid of that um, fine number of bins. Because what I should have clicked was ignore class, but I go ahead and apply that. And now I have five bins for age, as you notice here. Uh, if I want to do attribute selection, I can come over here to select attributes. And I've already run it once because I was making sure I knew how to do it before I did this video, but I just say start. And it tells me that income, married, and children are the, the attributes that it likes. I can also try several different um, algorithms as an attribute selector. So let's say I do information gain. It tells me that I have to use a different search method, which is okay. It'll change it for me. And then I say start. And Again, now it picked a few more attributes using that selection method. If I right click on this, I can say uh, save the reduced data. So it's actually, we'll create a data set with just those attributes that I select, which is a lot a cleaner way. Remember in Excel, we had to do that by, by hand. Um, then in order to, um, to classify, so in order to, uh, to do classifications, I come over here to classify and I've got all the different um, algorithms including many many more than what I had in Excel so if I wanted to do a um, a neural network this voted percepton is a neural network if I double click on this I can learn about this algorithm in fact many times it gives you wh where to go read about it um, and then also what it's good at right Okay, if I start it now runs a neural network and spits out the classification and matrix for me. Also clicks out precision and recall, which is a really good way to, um, to look at, uh, to evaluate those models. I can change and maybe run a logistic regression. Again, here's my classification matrix, my precision and recall. Um, notice that I'm doing cross-validation. If I wanted to do a percentage slip, a split like we did before, like 70-30, I, I would click here. Um, let's run 
a neural na uh, naive Bayes. You come over here, just say naive Bayes, and you can try all the algorithms. I'm only trying the ones that we used in class, but like I said, you have the ability. If you want to go back and revisit, you can just click on, on this tab, and, you can, and this is a good way to compare the various classification matches. Look, notice how much better logistic regression did than, than the neural network. And Naive Bayes did about the same. What haven't we run? We've done a logistic regression. Uh, let's do a tree. So we'll do a J48. And here, oh, the tree did, the tree did actually quite, quite well. Okay, and that's how we run those. Um, in another video, I will show you how to save these models so that we can apply them to our new data.